Hey guys, welcome to part two of this Godot Flappy Bird tutorial series where we're going to be building a Flappy Bird clone using Godot engine called a Flappy Fish. So this game is uh, based off and inspired by the original Flappy Bird game which uh, we have now just gone and modified some of the graphics and just uh, reutilized some of the same game mechanics uh, for a side scroller uh, from the Flappy Bird game and uh, we've just uh, created a bit of an underwater themed game. So uh, I'm just going to jump into this tutorial now and I'm going to uh, show you where I got the graphics from for this tutorial. So uh, I've uh, basically gone and I've uh, used uh, Inkscape uh, to create some of these graphics uh, assets, so a background with some underwater uh, plants, uh, flappy fish uh, graphic uh, for our player which has got a few frames and uh, we've got some sand banks for our backgrounds I've created this hook and I've created this flappy fish uh, logo which we're going to use for our UI and some corals uh, which are a bit badly drawn but uh, I'll do the trick you can always swap out uh, your graphics in your project as needed We've also created a bubble for our particle effect for our bubbles and uh, then what I've done is I've just exported them out into our project so as you can see I've already got them uh, in our Godot project over here so to start off uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to head over to the 2D mode in uh, Godot and then from there we want to just tweak some project settings so I go over to project and project settings and the first thing we want to uh, modify is the display so that it just fits a mobile sort of size in a portrait mode. So the first thing you want to do here is just uh, make sure your orientation is portrait. So I've already set mine to portrait and we want to change our width to uh, 576 and our height by 1024. And uh, that's going to modify our screen size for our game. And then our quality, uh, we just want to go and just uh, just want to mention this gel ES3 uh, is supported uh, on some of the more uh, latest Android devices. But uh, if there are some older phones or older Android uh, versions, uh, gel ES2 is supported only. But um, we'll test this out when we actually do create our APK for our uh, project uh, so that we can publish it on the App Store. So the next thing I just want you to uh, just uh, keep in mind here is we want to make sure that our quality is on low uh, for mobile just to uh, keep everything smooth for now. So once that's done we can close that up and you'll see that our window size is now resized to a portrait mode for mobile. So now the very next thing we want to do is we just want to uh, create a 2D scene node and rename this to game to so that we've got a root node for our game and then uh, we want to start bringing in our graphics so the first thing i'm going to bring in is uh, the floor png and drag that in over here and then i'm going to drag in floor fg which is the foreground sandbank and then i just want to make sure uh, if i zoom in here that uh, they actually line up with our uh, scene view so I'm just going to uh, individually select them just make sure that they are uh, just below that line of our scene view so the next thing we need to do is we uh, just need to bring in a scrolling background into our scene so I'm going to be using uh, the same technique I've used in my infinite scrolling background uh, tutorial for Godot so we're going to add a child node over here on the game object and we're going to use a texture rect and I'm going to just rename this to scrolling background and then what we want to do is we want to bring in our background PNG texture into our texture slot so just drag that over into there and you'll see that we've got our background so I'm just going to uh, slightly resize this uh, because I wanted to fit into our scene properly so I'm going to just go to the resize tool and just uh, bring this out ever so slightly just so that it can fit so I'm going to leave it off to uh, one side like this because I wanted to uh, be using this different variations of 
uh, plants uh, scrolling from right to left so now the next thing is we need to create our shader which is then going to control the scrolling of this background so what i'll do is i'll head over here to uh, material make sure you've got scrolling background selected and you go over to material and this empty slot new shader material and then just click this to expand it and then in the shader slot we're going to say new shader and we're going to click on it so this will open up this uh, code editor which is going to allow us to uh, write some shader language uh, to go and modify our texture or our material so first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a shader type uh, called canvas item which is uh, the recommended uh, shader type for 2D games in Godot. And then we're going to just uh, create a uniform float. So this is basically like a variable in a shader script or shader language. It's going to call this scroll speed. So we'll be controlling our scroll speed with this variable. And then I'm going to just define the fragment, fragment uh, function, which is going to modify each pixel in our material. So very simply, what we're going to do is we're just going to get the current UV of our background, and then we're going to shift it on the X axis. So to do that, we're just going to do a VEC2, and we're going to just call this scrolling uh, UV, and we're just going to get the current UV. Then we're going to take scrolling UV on the X and we're going to add our time and we're going to multiply that by our scroll speed. Right, so the next thing we now need to do is we need to sample uh, our texture based on this UV and then assign it to our color space. So VEC4 and I'm just going to call this call for color and call the texture method or function and get the texture sampled based on the scrolling UV. Let me just set that back to our color in our shader and we hit save for that. And I'm just going to now save the scene, the game scene, so that we've got that. And then just for our background here, we need to make sure that we change the stretch mode from scale on expand to tile. This will uh, basically allow our uh, background to just uh, carry on from well, stitching up uh, every time we scroll and it uh, becoming seamless. So what we're going to do next is we need a way of controlling this uh, scroll speed. So I'm going to create a script. I'm going to just go over to uh, res over here. I'm going to create a new folder called script. And I'm going to create a new GD script called scrolling BG. BG. And then we just want to assign it uh, to our scrolling background. So make sure you go to scrolling background over here and down here at script. Expand that and click on load. And then we're just going to load up this uh, background script. So at this point, nothing's going to happen. Now we need to actually create something for this. So I'm going to open up our scrolling bg.gd uh, script and get rid of uh, these comments just to uh, make this cleaner. And uh, the first thing we want to do is we just want to define a variable. So we use export because we want uh, this variable to be available in our inspector so that we can modify uh, any values we've got. So it's going to be an export load var scroll speed. And I'm going to set this to 0.15 because I think that's what I used in the original project. And then simply what we need to do is we need to uh, just set our parameter on our shader. So to do that, we're going to just call self.material set shader param. And I think we called it scroll speed in our shader. So I'm just going to use scroll speed. And we use the scroll speed, which is going to come from the inspector. So save that up. Should see um, if this is working. So maybe just run it and uh, have a look. So select your main game scene. Okay, so we've got our scrolling background now, which is uh, working. Looks a bit uh, strange because of the ordering here. So I'm just going to reorder this 
uh, just so that it spawns behind this uh, front uh, foreground. So let's play that again to see how it looks. Okay, so that looks a little bit more realistic now. So we've got um, a bit of an underwater effect where our background scrolls. So let's close that up. So next what we want to do is uh, we just want to maybe uh, just bring our player in and uh, create an animated sprite. Uh, so we've got some animation with our player. So how we're going to do that is we're just going to uh, create a new scene. I'm going to create a 2D scene over here and I'm just going to uh, probably, I don't know, maybe we should just organize this um, in a nice way. So what I'm going to do is I'll just uh, call this player maybe. And now we want to add a child mode called animated sprites. Let's bring that in over there. And then we need some frames over here. So what we'll do is we'll just create new sprite frames. And uh, we're just going to have the one animation at this point. So uh, it's the default. So we want to go over into animation over here. And uh, I just want to uh, just hit back here so we can just click on here and Okay, there we go. So you click on this little icon to get into our animation frames. And then I'm just going to drop my three frames into here to create our animation. So, so then just save this off as player.tsen. And let's uh, bring our player in just to see how that looks. to resize it like that. So, just, right. So, actually going to delete this out because I resized it by mistake. Um, so we're just going to bring that into the scene and let's just play this, see if this works. Okay, so there's no animation playing at the moment. Let's just see why that is. Close that up. Frame zero one. Looping. Our default animation speed scale one, and we just need to make sure we've got this playing uh, checked. So that was the issue why it was not playing. So we can hit save there. And then uh, you can see your player is now animated. So um, let's now just go here and just resize our player to have it make a little bit more sense. So I'll just use that scale tool, bring our player down. Hit save. See, does that look, it looks more or less correct. Uh, we can modify this a little bit later. Okay, cool. So next what we want to do is we want to uh, just create a kinematic body 2D, which is going to just uh, give our player some way of us being able to modify our player's velocity, etc. So in order to do that, I'm just going to add a child node called a kinematic body 2D. And then uh, we want to create a collision. So we go over here to the right. And uh, first need to create a collision shape 2D to be able to do that. So I'll just uh, add that in. And then here we can add our shape for our player. So I'm just going to use a capsule uh, let's see, no, let's rather use a rectangle shape 2D. I'm going to zoom in so we can see this uh, nicely. Just going to take it across like that and up like that. So that's going to give us some collisions on our player. And uh, also it's going to have a kinematic body 2D so that we can modify its velocity, etc. 
and allow it to you know fall and swim etc so guys uh, that's basically the end of this uh, second tutorial in this series uh, hopefully the next one is coming very soon so uh, guys if you've liked this video please do like it below subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell so that you can get all the updates for all the new tutorials coming uh, in the future thanks guys for watching see you cheers